The angry left is now using Independence Day to further divide the country. Former President Trump rallies for patriotism in Florida. Plus, is it finally time for Joe Biden to take a cognitive test? All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with the messages from the angry left over this weekend because Independence Day, like the American flag or the national anthem, should be something that brings Americans together. We have debates and disagreements all the time, but on this day, it should be something where we celebrate being American. But the left is turning it into a day to bash America. It is sad, it's disgusting, and it's real. Here is our first example from the New York Times. The New York Times was ripped on Saturday for publishing a piece that suggested the American flag has become a symbol of divisiveness. Today, flying the American flag from the back of a pickup truck or over a lawn is increasingly seen as a clue, albeit an imperfect one, to a person's political affiliation in a deeply divided nation. The Times tweet on Saturday with a link to their piece, a 4th of July symbol of unity that may no longer unite. In the piece, author Sarah Maslin Neer quotes a few individuals who believe that the flag has become so politicized that they now think twice about flying it outside their homes or businesses. Some people, for instance, have been hiding their patriotic pride and old glory after former President Trump's supporters and conservatives in general have embraced the flag so fervently. First of all, anyone who has to think twice about flying the American flag is the one with the problem. Those on the radical left are trying to destroy patriotism in education, in entertainment, in action. While patriotic Americans are flying the flag, those on the radical left are burning it. And here's more. What was once a unifying symbol, there's a star on it for each state after all, is now alienating to some it stripes now fault lines between people who kneel while the Star Spangled Banner plays and those for whom not pledging allegiance is an affront, Near wrote. And it has made the celebration of the 4th of July of patriotic bunting and cakes with blueberries and strawberries arranged into old glory into another cleft in a country that seems no longer quite so indivisible under a flag threatening to fray, she continued. This is just so outrageous and disingenuous. She laments the fact that the flag used to be a unifying symbol, yet the radical left hates unifying symbols. The things that bring us together, faith, family, freedom, patriotism, are the things under attack by the radical left. So the fact that she points out that the flag used to be unifying is so bogus, they just want to get rid of that as a symbol of unity. But that's not all. That's just the New York Times. There are plenty of other examples out there. The organization Campus Reform went out on the streets of Washington, D.C. to talk to college students about being proud to be an American. Check out some of the reaction. Are you proud to be an American? No. I feel embarrassed to be an American every day. I think a lot of things about this country are really embarrassing. Just like, I mean, racist history, colonization, even currently, just what's going on with politics and the cops. Um, not really in this climate. No, like... I'm a black person, so obviously I experience a lot of, uh, you know, there's like oppression that comes with that. Um, n not most of the time. I think sometimes it's just a little embarrassing. Wow. You know, I'd love to ask all of them, especially the one in the middle, how are you oppressed? Show me this example of American oppression and how it is keeping you down, how you are so oppressed. And here's more. Uh, no. <laughs> be proud of what? Yeah, what is there to be proud about if you're black and being like, you know, because it's just like it's a, still a lot of stuff that goes on for black people. I think that's a complicated question for me. I think I, I, I think most of the time, no, at least over like the past four years, um, it's been tricky to, you know, love to be an American. Half seas on that. Like partly because like I feel like there's certain topics where it's like very controversial, but like. I don't know. I just think that our economy just cares about money and not like our, like their our humans, like, yeah, in general. It's just so depressing. 
Kids are being taught to hate America, to hate the American ideal. They have no idea that America is the most tolerant, welcoming, freest country in the world. And so the host asked, okay, name a country that is greater than America. Here you go. I don't know. America's not really known for being like the most hospitable place, even though we have a reputation like where it's like you can come here and do what you want to be, do, be what you want to be and do what you want to do. It's not really um, the most welcoming to most people. Can you name a country that's more welcoming than the United States? Ooh, um, not really. I don't really know that. I don't really have that much information. Can you name a better country than the United States in your opinion? I'm not sure if I can. I don't think I can. Um, I mean, there's probably a really tiny European country that is thriving. Ooh, good question. Europe? It's just unbelievable. And in this segment, we only touched on a few examples of what the left was saying over the weekend. Check this out. Democrat Cory Bush tweeted that the 4th of July and American freedom is for white people. Black people still ain't free. Former MSNBC anchor Tor tweeted F Independence Day. NPR tweeted that the Declaration of Independence is flawed with deeply ingrained hypocrisies. Well, friends, the reason there is no unity like the New York Times laments is because they don't want it. It is so amazing that they do speeches, they do writings, they do news reports on the division of the country when they exactly want the division. They are the ones who promote it. Race relations were getting better. I talked about it all the time. And now they saw that it was getting better and they said, we got to divide people by race. This is not looking good. We need to make this our talking point, our issue, critical race theory, all of this garbage made to divide America. On Independence Day, the flag, the national anthem made to divide America. That's their focus. That's what they're doing. All right, next, let's talk about former President Trump. But first... If you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search out my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, so let's talk about former President Trump because there is a person who has no problems expressing patriotism, pride in country, love of America. He has no problems doing it and he calls out those who don't. This weekend on Saturday, he was in Florida. He was rallying for patriotism rallying over this Independence Day weekend. Here's some of his comments. Biden canceled my 1776 commission to honor America's founding within hours of taking office almost immediately. Great people were put on that commission. Great, great patriots. The Biden White House publicly took the side of the Olympic athlete who denounced the national anthem and who shunned our great flag. And in place of old-fashioned love of America, the Biden administration has new rules pushing hateful Marxist critical race theory into our children's schools and into our military. The poisonous left-wing doc is flagrant racism. It's plain and simple. It's pure, plain racism. See there? A commission to teach patriotism, the 1776 commission, was canceled by Joe Biden. Joe Biden also expressed support for the American athlete who turned her back on the flag, turned her back on the national anthem. This is the kind of president we have now in the White House. It's disgusting. Here's more from former President Trump, someone who actually knows what it's like to be an American and to be proud of it. The mission for all of us here tonight is to preserve the legacy of July 4th, 1776 and to defend our liberty from the radical left movement that seeks to cancel this date, demolish our heritage, and destroy our beloved nation. Imagine that, someone actually fighting for the American way of life. And it is such a contrast from those on the radical left who want to destroy America in everything that brings us together, everything that unites us, and then they talk about how divided we are. Here is how President Trump wrapped things up. There is no mountain we cannot climb. There is no summit we cannot reach. There is no enemy we cannot match. There is no challenge we cannot meet. There is nothing we cannot do. My fellow Americans, our movement is far from over. 
In fact, our fight has only just begun. You know that. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. So it's great comments from former President Trump. And again, it is just so refreshing, especially on Independence Day weekend, to see someone who actually loves America and contrast that with all the American-hating rhetoric that we saw from the Democrats and the media over the weekend. All right, so now let's talk about Joe Biden because we've seen folks throughout his campaign and throughout governing that he is losing it, that he is not all there. He has his cheat sheet, his little notes. He has his prearranged reporters that he calls on. He limits questions. He limits activity. We've seen it get worse and worse and worse. He stumbles even when he's using his teleprompter. Now, former White House physician is saying it's time, it's beyond time for him to take a cognitive test. And here's the story. Republican Texas Representative Ronnie Jackson, who is also a former White House physician, called for President Joe Biden to undergo a cognitive test Saturday. The far left in the mainstream media were demanding that be the new standard for anybody who's going to lead our country and be our commander in chief and our head of state, Jackson said. I'm just saying I agree with them at this point. We need to get it done, Trump's former White House physician added. He's absolutely right. We need to get this done. Here is just a sample of Joe Biden over the last few weeks. I also want to thank uh, Senator Sh Shelley Caputo uh, for earlier work in infrastructure agreement. When I raised that before, some of you looked at me like, where have you been, Biden? You've been spending too much in China or something. I haven't been to China. Guess what? Employers can't find workers. I said, yeah, pay them more. This is an employee's, employee's bargaining chip now. It's just stunning. And then over the 4th of July weekend, Joe Biden was in a store. He was asked what about his thoughts on Russia and hacking. He was stunned. He had to get his little cheat sheet notes. And even then, he still looked like he didn't follow what was going on. With the most recent hack by the Russians, would you say that this, this means We're that... We're not sure it's the Russians. Okay. I'll tell you what they sent me, okay? Uh, that uh, the idea, first of all, we're not sure who it is for certain, number one. And what I did, I directed the full resources of the, of the government to assist in a response if we determine. What else you need? Oh, nothing. You're all set. Okay. And, um, uh, the fact is that uh, I directed the intelligence community to give me a, a deep dive on what's happened, and I'll know better uh, tomorrow. And if it is uh, either with the knowledge of and or a consequence of Russia, then I told Putin we will respond. This is not good, folks, and Ronnie Jackson is right. It's time for him to take the test so we can know what's going on, and it's time for the media to ask serious questions about whether the president of the United States is capable of being president. It's very serious. They cover for him all the time. It needs to change. All right. So next, let's talk about parents fighting back against critical race theory because they are speaking up more and more and more. And it has the left playing defense. They are trying to say their latest talking points are that we don't know what critical race theory is, that it's not even being taught in schools. So it's pretty interesting, given that angle, those talking points, that the largest teachers union in America has just come out and endorsed the teaching of critical race theory. And here's the story. The country's largest teachers union has moved to undermine the left-wing talking point that critical race theory is not taught to children by voting to promote it and arguing it is reasonable and appropriate to use CRT in social studies classes. The National Education Association has approved a plan to publicize critical race theory and dedicate a team of staffers to assist union members looking to fight back against anti-CRT rhetoric. So wait a second. The largest teachers union in America is endorsing something that doesn't exist. They're calling critical race theory, the teaching of it, reasonable and appropriate 
but I thought it wasn't being taught. Now they want to publicize it even more. It makes no sense. And it runs counter to what the radical left are saying in the media with their talking points. But that's not all, folks. Check out what else was in this resolution. And keep in mind that these are people teaching children in America. New business item 39 also declares that the union opposes bans on critical race theory and the New York Times' controversial 1619 project, which roughly half the U.S. states have already implemented. Additionally, the resolution calls for the union to join with Black Lives Matter at school and the Zinn Education Project to call for a rally this year on October 14th, George Floyd's birthday, as a national day of action to teach lessons about structural racism and oppression. This is an education, friends. This is left-wing indoctrination. And keep in mind that the NEA represents about 2 million teachers. It's estimated that there are 3.2 million public school teachers in America, so the NEA represents over half of them. And these are their talking points. Critical race theory, BLM, left-wing indoctrination. That's what they're doing, and the only way to stop it is for more and more parents to speak out, to go to these school boards and say, we're not going to take any of this stuff. We want the basics, reading, writing, arithmetic, patriotism, civics, not critical race theory. Folks, that's our show for today, but don't forget, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on, that way you can follow the show and help us grow. All right, thanks again so much for tuning in. Our next show will be Wednesday at the usual time. Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. Okay, friends, thanks so much for watching. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you'll be notified. And here's a special video just for you so you can watch even more of the 13-minute news hour. And don't forget to check out GOPUSA.com for the best in conservative news and commentary. We'll see you next time.